when I discovered homeopathy, um, I mean, it changed, personally, it changed my life. And um, I did my homeopathic training at the Hahnemann Homeopathic College in Berkeley, California. And I have to laugh because I went to, uh, I did my allopathic or traditional training at the Hahnemann College in Philadelphia. And then I repeated my training, Hahnemann on the other end of the United States. So, you know, I had, a, I had, a repeat, I had to repeat my training to get it right. But it was a four-year program. And every month for a long weekend, I flew from Pittsburgh to San Francisco for four days. And I just could not wait for those four days. I said to myself, why didn't they teach us this in medical school? You know, all this just makes sense. And um, it was just such a wonderful experience. And the thing that just really, you know, blew my mind was when I got my homeopathic training, I used the same textbooks that they used 200 years ago. And when I went to medical school, by the time I was a senior, all the things I learned my freshman year are outdated. And then people say, well, it's the progress of medicine. Medicine's getting better and we're helping people more, but it's just the opposite. There's more and more theories. You know, the only joyous thing that happened, they executed the head of the FDA in China. They should do the same thing here in the United States. You know? Uh, so, uh, but, but homeopathy is, is truly based on laws, laws that don't change, laws of healing. And you really don't have to practice homeopathy to be a good physician as long as you understand those laws. And the basic law is that our body is very intelligent. And we're not capable, our minds are not capable of understanding disease. All we can do is observe disease. And, you know, homeopathy was developed by Samuel Hahnemann about 250 years ago. And Hahnemann was a physician, a brilliant physician. He was fluent in six languages, had various degrees, and he became very disgusted with medicine of his time because of bloodletting, caustic salts, and he felt that medicine was causing more harm than good. So he quit his, med his medical profession, and because he was fluent in six languages, he worked as a translator. And he was translating uh, McCullen's Materia Medica, and they were talking about cinchona bark. And in the chapter uh, that he was translating, it stated that cinchona bark was good for the treatment of malaria because of its astringent properties. And he said, this really doesn't make sense, astringent properties. I mean, there's many astringent chemicals, why is this particular substance good for malaria? And being a scientist, he decided to begin taking the cinchona bark himself. And he ingested it. And then he developed symptoms of malaria, high fever and chills. And then he remembered uh, a law of antiquity which dated back to Paracelsus and Hippocrates. And that law states that, you know, like cures like the law of similars. So uh, being the scientist, what he did was he began homeopathic provings. Now, one of the biggest complaints that people have about homeopathy is that it's not scientific. There's no science behind it. But one good thing that happened by a quirk of nature and maybe an act of God, that every homeopathic substance that we use has been approved by the FDA. And you may say, well, how can that possibly be? Well, the FDA went to sleep. They fell asleep. There was a book called The Homeopathic Pharmacopeia. This is like a couple hundred year old textbook that lists all the homeopathic remedies. And they were grandfathered in by the FDA as you know, uh, safe and effective substances. So fortunately, we have the homeopathic pharmacopeia and all the homeopathic remedies that I use were approved by the FDA through the back door. So what is a homeopathic proving? Remember the law of similars that like cures like. And simply stated is a substance which produces symptoms in a healthy individual will cure those in a diseased state. 
So, um, and the way of homeopathic proving is done, let's say belladonna. Belladonna is a common homeopathic remedy. And usually a proving is done, you're given an unknown substance. So nobody in this room would know that they are getting belladonna. Everybody would get some pellets, and you're to take the pellets twice a day, and you keep a diary and you record all your symptoms. So at the end of a week or two week period, we'd all get together again and would talk about our symptoms. Maybe everybody in a room developed throbbing headaches. Some people developed sweats. So if the majority of people develop that symptom, that becomes a prominent feature of that homeopathic remedy. So in Belladonna, one of the proving symptoms is a throbbing headache. So if a person then develops a headache that throbs, then belladonna is the particular remedy that will treat that. And when I was in um, um, homeopathic training, uh, we did a proving of many, many different remedies. And it's fascinating then to come up with a remedy picture. So all these remedy pictures were tabulated in great detail. Uh, there's a book called Allen's Materia Medica, which is over 13 volumes, and each volume is maybe 500 pages, where it lists all these symptoms. And you can see that, that homeopathy is scientifically, has scientifically developed. It's not that we selected these remedies randomly. And the thing that really illustrates to me that homeopathy has power is many times you'll give a person a remedy and there'll be no effect. And maybe the second remedy, a partial effect. But when you do get the right remedy, there's a major transformation. It seems to help all aspects of the person. Now, you know, homeopathy is so difficult to explain because usually when you talk to somebody about homeopathy, they go, yeah, I know homeopathy. It's eating organic food and, you know, drinking water and diet. But homeopathy is based on these remedies that I'm talking about. And these remedies are substances that are diluted. And the best way that I can explain this is, for example, everybody knows echinacea. You know, you take echinacea to strengthen your body. Uh, for colds and flus and things like that. But you're taking a physical substance. So the way a mother tincture is made in herbology is that the physical substance is soaked in alcohol for three to five days. And that alcohol then leaches out the healing properties of the medicine. So that's one way of developing an herbal product. A second way is just simply to dry the product chop it up and put it into the capsule. So when you go to the store, you're taking echinacea either in a tincture form or, or the capsules. I, I personally think that the tincture form is much better because of the higher absorption. Um, now, so how do we make a homeopathic remedy? Well, a homeopathic remedy, we dilute the substance. So if we take that mother tincture, we dilute it a hundredfold, and that becomes a 1C. Then we dilute it again a hundredfold. That becomes a 2C. Then we dilute it again. It becomes a 3C. So you can see the success of dilutions. And sometimes we get to 10 to the minus 200. So it's been successively diluted uh, 200 times by 100. And it's, it's to the point where if you calculate it um, chemically in terms of dilution, it's like one molecule being in the Pacific Ocean. And that's how traditional medicine mocks homeopathy. You know, there's nothing there. How can it work? It's so dilute. But it's based on energy. And, you know, we have a physical body that I can touch and feel. And then we have different outer layers of our body, our spirit, uh, etheric layers, and, you know, what have you. And what homeopathy does, it takes that physical substance and it kind of energizes it to a certain energy substance, which kind of treats the, the cause of the disease, the energetic disturbance of our body. 